Hey y'all, it's TX Stampin' Sharon. I am a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and I have been doing what I do for the past 26 years. I absolutely love learning something and then teaching it. So tonight, I hope I teach you a few tricks. Um, if nothing else, I do hope I inspire you. This is a live, uh, YouTube live. I am live on December the 21st. Well, it's going to be Christmas before we know it at 7 p.m. Central. If you're watching the replay, I sure do appreciate you taking the time to uh, check out this video. If you have not subscribed to my videos, I would love for you to subscribe to my channel below. Um, I do want to say hello to everyone who has joined me during the live itself. I know that to do that, you have to stop what you're doing, turn on your computer or pull up your device or put me on the TV. And I sure do appreciate it. I'm glad you're here. I do want to introduce you to my friend, Michelle Batson. She is my moderator during these lives. Um, I keep my head down. I try not to look up because if I do, I get in the middle of a conversation and then I lose track of what I'm doing. So Michelle is here to help you um, if you need to find something, if you need to uh, ask a question, you could type the at sign and start typing Michelle's name. So um, we don't do these lives without Michelle, I tell you. <laughs> um, I want to say hello to Vicky and Roxanne and Connie and Kay. Hi, Eileen. Hi, Linda. I think that most of the country is a little on the chilly side. We are coming up on Christmas, so it is December. Um, I It wasn't even that cold here in Central Texas, but it was damp. You know, it was that kind of a cold. So I do have on my sweater tonight. So I hope everybody is ready for the holidays. Um, this is my last live for the year. <laughs> I'll be back on January the 4th uh, with some more inspiration. I am going to be sharing tonight um, the Garden Meadow. Uh, these are online exclusives, okay, which means you won't find these in any printed catalog, okay? Um, so it's Garden Meadow. We're coming up on, you know, nice springy looking kind of stuff, even though it's December. Um, and the beautiful papers that go with it. The papers are simply stunning, just absolutely stunning. Here are the dies. Um, Michelle, Michelle says, more importantly, you wouldn't be here without me. Thank you, my friend. The dies, I did not play with them too much. I did play with this one on my cards. What I wanted y'all to see is how quickly you could make a stack of cards to let someone know that you were thinking of them. You know, this is the season that we are at that there are people who um, feel a little bit more of the loneliness if they don't have their friends and family with them during the holidays. And even though these are not Christmas cards or anything like that, they're strictly thinking of you cards. Um, I couldn't resist though, on my last card that I'm going to show you in this stack, I did have to play with this die right here. So I played with this one and this one. Um, the designer series papers are absolutely gorgeous. They don't need anything else. They are so pretty all by themselves. And we're going to take a look at them further as I show you my cards. Um, so like I said, these are online exclusives and, you know, this suite is called um, the Meandering Meadow Suite. Okay, so a stamp set, dies, the paper, these cute little dragonfly and bird, are they called gems? Mm, adhesive back dragonflies and birds are out of stock right now. But as you can see, I used up quite a few of them. You could use any embellishments if you didn't have those. Um, the measurements, uh, Connie is asking if I will have my measurements available. I do. I have my sheet that will be available on my blog at 8 PM central when this is over. So I wanted to just point that out that these are not in any catalog. Like some people, I mean, and y'all, I, it's hard to keep up with. Like tonight I was working on my cards for January, my mystery cards and I was like, well, where did I get this stamp set? I, 
Is it an online exclusive? Is it in the last minute? Because I couldn't find it online. It's coming up. So there's a lot to keep up with sometimes. I do have um, the um, measurements and everything that will be posted on my blog, like I said, after 8 p.m. And that link is below the video. Linda says that she is having so much fun with this paper. Linda, it just, it's just stunning, isn't it? And it just does all the work for us. So I'm going to show you my cards up close. All you have to do now, if you'll notice this one, I just stamped straight on to the designer series paper. I didn't even make a layer, um, you know, a greeting layer. So here's another one. Here's another one. I mean, they're all unique because of the colors. Okay. Thinking of you. I mean, just absolutely gorgeous. Okay, so here's where I played with, I just added the gate. I mean, it just looks like they're just walking down the meadow. So pretty, so pretty. Sharon says they are in far Texas for the winter and loving the weather. Good, Sharon. Um, <laughs> Margaret corrected me. I do mean a mat. Mm -hmm. Some of them don't have a mat. Now, this one is a little bit different. Um, I wanted you to see, see if you can see the whole picture. I cut the designer series paper in strips and I just added it to the card. So I did put these measurements on, um, on my handout. Okay. Now, all of the layers are the same. Um, I did add um, some of the designer series paper to my envelope. So remember where I told you that I wanted to play with that arch? Okay, I had to make a shaker card. Literally made it tonight while I was waiting to go live. If you've never made a shaker card, I'd be happy to walk through that with you guys if you want me to. Um, but I, ty I, ty I typed on the inside. I can't imagine having a better friend. I kept looking at the outside and I didn't want to take away from where the shakers were, where the uh, elements were, or the picture. So I decided not to put my greeting on the front. I absolutely love this card. I even cut several more to do. I embossed with the, um, let's see, this is called the Exposed Brick 3D Embossing Folder. Okay. So, so pretty, so easy. If you want me to show y'all how to do um, a shaker card. Let me know. Okay. So what I wanted to do, I wanted to tell you that if you will get a stack of cardstock, cut your stack of designer series papers to fit, get your basic white to go on the inside. Oh, I know what I was going to show y'all. Wait, wait, wait. One more thing. Where's my cards? Okay. So you know how when you cut off the strip, so this is four inches by five and a quarter, you have a good two inches over here and you have like um, three quarters of an inch at the top or the bottom. Add those strips on the inside here or across the bottom. There's no reason to waste any of this. You are going to be using almost all of this designer series paper. Mind blown, right? I did it on all of them. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Move these all out of the way. I'm going to get some bases ready. Oh, Diane says, please show us the um, shaker card. Okay, I will. So what I've done is I have picked, I have cut one of each of the patterns, okay? And I'm going to pair them up with a base. I did not do that ahead of time. I was like, this is going to be easy and quick. <clears throat> Mary Yates says she is feeling more at ease with shaker cards. I'm glad. Shaker cards are, don't be stressing over shaker cards, Mary. I promise. Um, yes, you can also put some of the strips on your envelopes. It's okay, you're right. Um, it's just, it's super fun to just use up. I like that with that. To use up all of the pieces. 
Let's see. This looks like it'll go here. So y'all see what I'm doing. I've cut some bases. And this one I think I want navy. Ernie says she would love to see a shaker card. Yes, ma'am. I can do that. Because these cards are going to go together so quickly. Oh, what are you doing over here? Let's get you in. Let's get you in here. Um, I think I'm seeing... What do y'all think? Yep. So you just pair up. So I just cut, um, I cut Melon Mambo. I cut uh, Knight of Navy. I just cut different card bases. I know I use some shaded spruce. <clears throat> Kate Rat said that she will make a shaker card with, um, with the paper. She didn't even think about that. There you go. Um, yeah, I'm seeing that. You could certainly use basic white if you wanted to on these. Um, totally up to you. No, not seeing that. I'm not seeing that. I'm seeing Old Olive. Yep. Isn't it funny how some of them, um, some of the colors just jump out as you're pairing them up. Okay, so, oh yeah. So see, I see balmy blue right there. Or Daffodil Delight. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, what else do we need? <clears throat> I think another piece of balmy blue maybe. Yep. <clears throat> oh my goodness. I knew, I knew I was going to start coughing. You know, you just know when you know, I've been fine all day, <clears throat> except for literally about 10 minutes before we started. Nope. Not seeing that. Yep. And I took, <clears throat> <clears throat> I don't know if Rosemary is on here, but she told me about some honey lozenges that would help your tickle of your throat. So I took one. Worked for a minute. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to decide if we need to stamp directly on our layer or if we're going to need to add it on um, basic white and mat it. There you go, y'all. I said it. <laughs> um, I think I want to put it, I think I want to stamp it on basic white. I'm going to get my memento out. There are a ton of allergies right now, and it is not fun. Um, my poor husband has really had a hard time with it, and so... Um, I'm like, I'm so over this. <laughs> I thought I was doing better. Kay says, add it and Matt and Matt it. And then Deborah says, Matt has arrived. Oh my goodness, y'all. We are a mess. Aren't we a mess? Okay. So I'm going to get, I've already cut these. These were, uh, let's see, two and a quarter by one and three quarters, I think. Anyway, um, yeah, one and three quarters. It's on the handout that I have for you. Um, but yeah, I think that's what it is. And then you can decide when you put it on your mat, if you want it to be on um, dimensionals or not, which I think it needs it. So I'm going to grab some. Oh, those are little ones. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Come on. Whoops. Okay. I'm just going to put this together. Oh, so pretty. Uh, 
Yes, there's Rosemary. She is here. Um, these are such simple cards, but I think they're elegant and I think they're so easy to do. I'm probably not going to make all of them for y'all on camera. I just want you to see how quick and easy they are to make. Um, and then you can, you know, just using all the bits and pieces. I wasn't going to show how to do a shaker card tonight. I literally was going to just show you how to make all of these um, cards. But if y'all want to see the um, shaker card, that's going to take up some time. Okay, so this was the piece that I cut off. Do y'all see that? Let's grab our trimmer and we're gonna cut it let's do it at mm -mm, i want it this way i think i'm just gonna do a half an inch you could do a half an inch you could do three quarters of an inch it's up to you because now we still have plenty to play with and then i'm going to cut this down to five and a quarter okay now, I think when you're adding this skinny little piece here, you honestly do need to use some liquid glue. Um, Rosemary says she has matched the paper with some bizarre colors and they turn out fantas fantastic. It's kind of crazy. Every time I look at them, I see different colors too. So it's pretty, pretty fun. You could just use whatever you have. Um, I'm just going to scooch this over, and there we go. Whoops. A little wiggle room too much there. Okay. Now, there we have it. So, we have the outside, and then we have that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put some of the, the birds or the dragonflies on my cards. Um, but just remember, these are not available right now. They'll be back in stock later. Um but these are online exclusives, so, <clears throat> excuse me, they're not going to go anywhere. I think I just want one little dragonfly, thinking of you. Jane says that she is loving this. She doesn't know what to do with busy designer series paper. Um, I, you know what, Jane, I totally hear what you're saying. Sometimes we feel like we need to put something bigger over that and we absolutely do not um we simply don't have to cover up the whole thing okay so let's do another one <clears throat> i actually could just assembly line do these and probably get them all done while we're live So I saw in the chat that everybody was asking, who's ready for the holidays? Who's ready? So who's traveling for the holidays? I am not. I am staying home. We traveled at Thanksgiving, and so I am not going anywhere for Christmas. So there's that one. And I'm kind of glad. You know, it's been, it's been a hard past couple of months, so I'm kind of glad to just be home. And uh, we will have Christmas with some of our kids and grandkids, but we did the whole big thing. Now look at the back of that. Now see, even that's pretty. Okay, so that's the back side. Don't forget, there are two sides to every piece of paper, and this designer series paper is no exception. So you see how quickly, I almost didn't even cut the paper before we started. Um, but I decided, no, I don't know where we're going to go. I don't know how this is going to last. So I'm glad I did. But you can literally just make these cards, put them together. Don't even put a greeting until you need it. How about that? You don't even have to put thinking of you. But like I said, I wanted to send out a bunch of thinking of you cards for no reason. How fun is that? Just to send a card for no reason. <clears throat> Hello, Susan Hammond. I'm glad you're here. I was looking for you. Um, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. I won't be back on 
uh, YouTube until January the 4th, in which I have a fun class. We are not doing techniques in January, although, you know, you kind of pull techniques in when you do just about anything else. So um, it's a fun class. I designed it yesterday. I'm super excited to share it with y'all. So that will be on January the 4th. Kate says that she likes that idea. Just have these all ready. Don't even put a greeting. Just have them ready for whatever occasion. Okay, so now I'm putting the basic white on the inside. Um, Dee says that she is going to the families, just a short drive. They would make great birthday cards. They would make great birthday cards, thinking of you cards, get well cards. Um, you know, they're just, they're beautiful all by themselves for whatever you need. You know, um, sometimes when you're out and about and you meet people, um, having a generic card to give them like this where you could jot a note or something on the inside um, is, is I, mean, I cannot tell you how many times I've done that. <laughs> Here, here's my card. Now let me write my information for you so that you can... Um, you know, look me up or whatever we've been talking about so that we can um, follow up on our conversation. So again, you see how quickly I'm doing these. Mary Catherine is going to Montgomery, Texas. Where is Montgomery, Texas, Mary Catherine? I do not know where that is. Montgomery, Texas. Hello, food table. We're glad you joined us. Um... So again, I'm just putting together these beautiful cards made with the Meandering Meadows Designer Series paper. This is literally, if I finish, this will be 12 cards and how many minutes? Where are we at? Oh, I've been taught. I've only been live for 22 minutes and we are almost done. That's how quick. That's how quick these are. <clears throat> now I'm quickly doing these you don't have to go as quickly as I am but I want you to know that these these type of cards just don't take long at all so take a look at your designer series papers whether you have the meandering meadows or not um okay so that one's already done then you know you could easily Use any designer series papers that you have. Okay, so now we can look at these cards and say, do we want to stamp on the layer or do we want to stamp on basic white? Like this one right here, I have lots of room right here. I could just stamp the greeting and not have any layers. I think I'm going to pull this over. because it fits. Hi, Terry from Southern California. You see that? How perfect is that? This one, kind of hover over it. Yep, I can do that too. This one, nope, doesn't fit. I'm gonna need and since I'm using the same greeting, I know that they're all going to fit on the same piece of paper. Um, I did not cut. Yep. I think I'm, mm, do I want that or do I want blue? I think I want blue. So you see what I'm doing? <clears throat> Excuse me. I am simply just looking at it and see what my eye is attracted to. And adding it to my card. Um, Inika, it does fit. But there is no mat. 
those of y'all who are joining us for the first time, we do have an inside joke with my regular viewers. Um, it is all about Matt, M-A-T-T, -T, um, but we really don't mean M-A-T-T. -T, we mean M-A-T, like this is a mat for our greeting layer. So, <clears throat> excuse me, now I'm looking at this, I'm like, I don't want to put it up there. I think I'm going to put it down here. Yeah, I like it there. How fun. Terry says, oh, very beautiful paper. I'm enjoying your video. I'm so glad. Yeah, I'm so happy that this is something that you're enjoying. Um, and I hope that it inspires you. I hope it inspires you to take a look at what you have. See if you can do the same idea. Look at this. That goes right there to make these cards. Now, this paper is available on my Stampin' Up! website. You can find that link below the video. Um, this is called Meandering Meadows Designer Series Paper. Nope. I don't like that. So we're going to put that, we're going to put that on um, a basic white layer. Um, so this is called Meandering Meadows. And uh, you can find it on my website. Like I said, below the video. Um, yep. And I, I don't even know what is there. Is there 25 pieces of paper? How many paper? Michelle, can you tell us how many pieces of paper are in this designer? I think it's 48, 48 sheets. Yeah, that's what it is. You could make 48 cards like that. Mind boggling, mind boggling. Okay. And then you could even just... You know what? I don't know if I'm going to stick that down. I don't think I like that with that color, but I did not cut. I really think I want Night of Navy. So I'm not going to use that one for that. Let's see if I want it for another one. Yep. I'll use it for this one. Ah, no, I won't. I'll use it for this one. I just, I wasn't happy with the Night of Navy. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. Look at me changing it up. There is 48 sheets. There you go. And they're double sided. The other side is maybe some of them are just a solid print. Uh, not really um, as beautiful of a pattern as this, but some of them are like a brown, which would be great for a masculine card. Now y'all see, I only have a couple more left. Isn't that crazy? Huh, look at that. I got lots of room here to stamp. But you know what? Sympathy cards are not easy. That would make a good sympathy card. Okay, last one. And I'm done. So except for that one, and I didn't like, I didn't like having, I don't know. I do see blue there, but I don't know. We'll see. So as I pointed out, you can add your strip on the inside of the scraps. And I have all these scraps, whoops, I have all these scraps that I could use. Okay. Um, but they're just so simple, so easy, and so pretty. Okay, so I hope I inspired y'all to make these cards. And now those of you who had joined me at the beginning said that you wanted to know how I did the, a shaker card. Okay, so that really wasn't planned for the video um, or for the live, but we're going to do it because I cut up some other pieces because I was going to make more. I was like, well, I was literally waiting uh, for the... Uh, for my time to go live and I just started stamping and playing. So I am going to, all right, let me show you what I used. I used the exposed brick 3D embossing folder to emboss after I cut, where is my dies? Um, hold on. 
So first, you want to cut the paper. This is basic what? And this is literally four and a quarter by five and a half. Okay, it is the same size as a folded card front. Where is? Thought I had what? Do do do. Yeah, thought I had a white one. Yep, I did right here. Okay. So when you fold a card, it is four and a quarter by five and a half. Terry says that she's never made a shaker card. I've seen many done and I love them, but I haven't tried one yet. Terry, I love that word yet. I hope after you see this one, you try it. All right. So you see, it is the same size as my folded cardstock. All right. Okay, so oh, I realized something. Um, I have some window sheets that I have cut. And, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, these are cut a little bit smaller. I don't know if you can tell, but I cut them four by five and a quarter, a little bit shorter than my layer. All right. Now, let me get a piece of paper. Let me get the designer series paper and I, no, I'm just going to pick one because it's hard to decide. So I'm just going to pick the first one um, on this one. I'm going to cut it at four inches. And I'm going to cut off some of the sky. Yes. Five and a quarter. Now, I will tell you something. I just now thought of this. Remember on my first card, I said I didn't want to take away and put the greeting on the front, so I stamped it on the inside. What would happen if I stamp it right here? Uh, let's see. Let's see if it's going to fit, though. That's pretty. I think it will. I think we could stamp our greeting right here. There we go. I'm going to do it. Okay. Now on this one, I did cut out the arch, um, my designer series paper, but I'm not going to do it for this one. This one, I just want to show you how to, um, how to make your shaker card. Now what I want to do, since I'm going to be stamping, I'm going to just take my pencil and I'm going to mark the top of my arch. Hold on. I just want to make sure. Oh, see how the back of that is brown? I'm going to mark the top of my arch. Yep. Okay. Because I don't want to stamp past that or you won't be able to see it. Okay. Um, what a fun and lovely card, says Rosemary. Thank you. <clears throat> Great for birthday or anniversary. Have you tried making a shaker ornament? You know, I have made shaker ornaments. I had, didn't make one this year. I had plans to make some ornaments this year and that did not work out. Um, but yeah, super fun. Okay, so I'm just going to stamp thinking of you right here. Oh, Michelle popped up a uh, link for you guys if you wanna look in the chat for other shaker cards that I have done. Okay, so now I want to take, I'm just gonna take a white eraser and erase my pencil mark. I love this idea of stamping that greeting on the inside. Genius, if I do say so myself. Okay, so <clears throat> now I'm going to add, I'm just gonna double check ourselves, yep. I'm going to add my designer series paper. Just going to stick it on just like I did the other ones that you saw me make. Okay. Deborah says that I make everything look easy. I hope I do. And I hope you will give it a try. All right. Now let's talk about the elements of our shaker card. First of all, we need two window sheets. I know you can't hardly see those, but I have two, one in each hand, okay? One of them 
I'm going to stick directly on the back of my um, layer. You know, I go back and forth with, with which adhesive to use. I am going to use some liquid glue because I emboss this layer. Okay. Just putting a little bit of liquid glue because we don't want it to squish out if we can help it. Then I'm going to place the, li the uh, liquid glue, the window sheet. Just tapping it. I don't want it to slip on me. Okay. The next thing you need is, I mean, this works the best. We have some foam strips that you can use. Um, and <clears throat> um, I find that these this works the best to seal off. We don't want our shakers to be up here or, you know, we want it to just be in the window part. So we are going to line this up as close as we can to the opening. Um, if you don't have foam strips like this, um, I have seen people actually, oh, I don't like you way over there. Oh, it is what it is. I have seen people actually put a million bajillion dimensionals, but I promise you, if you don't have a solid mm, foam section, if you don't have it, <clears throat> it, um, Renee says that she usually puts tape on her window sheet to keep it from slipping before, while that glue is drying. You could certainly do that. Um, that's because Renee is so smart. Uh, but what I was going to say is if you don't have a complete seal, the first time somebody shakes that card, things, little shakers are going to fly. I sent my grandson a shaker card, I think when he was five. And his mama wasn't happy with me because he figured out if he shook it really, really hard, the pieces would fly out. <laughs> he got a little, he got a little over anxious there on the shaking. All right. So I'm really pulling, pushing this down, making sure that um, Linda says she uses tear and tape, tear and tape to hold the window sheet down, Linda. Okay. Cindy Wagner, did you get my message, girl? I tried to call you today. Um, then I sent you an email. So make sure you check your email, check your voice. I don't think it let me leave you a message. I don't think so. Anyway, check your email. <laughs> so I'm pulling off the backing to my foam strips. I want to do this now because when you go to put your elements inside, um, and you go to pull that backing, these, it's like little jumping beans. <laughs> now I am using the uh, iridescent shaker circles and I threw in some of the loose uh, silver sequins. Okay, anything, um, you could even, what did I do the other day? I was cutting out something and I got little silver, no, little gold, it was gold circles. And I was like, Ooh, I'm going to keep those for a shaker card. So anything that you punch out or whatever you could, um, you could use. So tear and tape would work for the window sheet to the cardstock. You're going to need a little bit of dimension so that when you shake your card, the shaker pieces can move around. So you don't want all of your adhesive to be too flat. Does that make sense? Okay. Some people even like to uh, use their embossing buddy to get the static out of their window, um, out of their window sheet. I typically don't do that. I used to. I don't know why I quit, but um, just found that I don't need it really. Um, and Renee, wasn't it you who said that you um, 
put some adhesive up at the top so that some of the shakers will stay. Um, help me out, Renee. You know what I'm talking about? So Michelle is pointing out something that if you don't have any window sheets and you want to uh, play along with this, you want to make a shaker card. Let's see if I have one. These are all, of course, they're all I was looking for the clear mount stamps, the photopolymer stamps, because in the photopolymer packages, you get window sheets. Mm -hmm. That's what your stamps come on. Thanks, Renee. Uh, thanks, Renee. Thanks, Michelle, for pointing that out because I forgot to say that. All right. I'm just going to add my um, other sequins in here. A dryer sheet also works to remove that static. You're absolutely correct. Now, here's where the Mexican jumping bean scenario can happen. This has static in it. Um, and when you the closer you get, these little sequins could jump up to it. So what I like to do is just kind of hover over. How am I doing? I'm lining up pretty good. And then I just go down. Okay. And then I'm just going to seal... And actually, my little stack is a little high. I'm going to push it down some. And then there you go. Could you use an embossing buddy on the clear sheet? Yes, Katie, you sure can. Okay. So since I had some bigger chunks, my um, I, I didn't need it, Renee. I didn't need my embossing buddy, but what they're saying is you can put the embossing buddy on both sheets on, on the window sheets to prevent that static so that that Mexican jumping bean scenario didn't happen. Um, but I, since I had just made one earlier, I knew that these sequins didn't jump as bad <laughs> as some of the others. All right. So now what we need to do, oh, look at that. <gasps> How pretty is that? Now we need to stick this to this. I did decide to use my tear and tape um, because I, I think I used my tear and tape on this because of what my grandson did that time by, you know, being a little overzealous. Um, I didn't want this to come off of my card and it's just a good, strong adhesive. When you use the liquid glue, you do need to be careful because uh, the window sheets is slippery. Um, okay, so Terry is saying that she has seen demos, uh, demonstrators glue some of the um, sequins where they want them. Um, so yeah, you could do that. I think the bigger the sequins are too, you don't really have to, okay? Um, because look, I haven't messed with that one in a while and they're still up here, okay? All right, so let's get the backing off. Okay, I want to know in the comments, I want to know on the replay, if you are now brave enough to make a shaker card after seeing me do this. It's really not hard. It's a fun interactive card for kids of all ages. Um. Oops, it does not want to come off. I glue some of the sequins in place. That way, when you shake them, there are always some floating around. I thought it was you, Renee, that said that you did that. Um, okay. So now what I'm trying to do is I am looking at my sides. Because remember, this piece is the same size as this uh, folded cardstock. And just want to make sure that I'm good on all sides. Brenda says she is going to try it. Yay. Okay. So look at that. Thinking of you. How fun is that? And then here's this one where I just stamped on the inside. Okay. <clears throat> Donna says she's never used two window sheets. She adheres the DSP uh, to the foam strips. So Donna, when you do that, how do you do that? Do you get always get it on straight? Renee says, if anyone wants to start on next year's cards, 
she uses kosher salt for snow inside of her shaker cards. I was talking about bits of paper. I didn't even think about salt, kosher salt. Yay. Um, <clears throat> Michelle Townsley says that she made a shaker card last week. And before realizing that I'm out of sequins or shakers of any kind, you should go get the salt, go get the salt. Okay. Y'all we covered a lot tonight. We covered how to make a stack of cards and we covered how to do shaker cards. Easy. All of it's easy. I hope that you are inspired to try this. I hope that you will uh, look at your DSP a different way, especially those busier patterns. Um, could you do something like this by just putting a greeting on and having some easy cards um, to let people know that you're thinking about them? There you go. I want to thank everybody who joined me during the live. Um, <clears throat> and uh, let's see. Cindy says, I like the one you just showed us the best. Well, then I'm glad I showed it to you, Cindy. I'm glad I was putzing around waiting for the live to start and made a shaker card so I could share it with y'all. So um, I will be back on YouTube on January the 4th at 7 p.m. Central. This is the Christmas holidays. I do want to wish everyone um, a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I'll see you in 2024.